And so we've arrived at the two characters that I was looking forward to getting to. Luz No Seda and Amani Blight, collectively known by the fandom as Lumini. Of all the Disney characters I've covered in this series, these two other ones I have a lot to say about. Probably the first time since Lightning McQueen's highlight reel episode. From their love story, to their relationship, and to their overall awesomeness. I bet all you Lumini fans out there have been waiting for this very moment in this marathon for their highlight reel episode. So, without further ado, let's end this marathon with a bang. With the two characters that I have a lot to say about. Buckle up, Disney fans. This is going to be the biggest one yet. So strap yourselves in. Boy, oh boy, this character description is going to be a long one. So buckle up for this. Luce is a kind-hearted, outgoing, eccentric, energetic, and exceedingly geeky girl who possesses a strong love of fantasy and adventure. She is an extremely optimistic person who always attempts to see the best in others, even in past enemies. She is eager to find her place in the world and be accepted for who she feels she truly is. She is clever, creative, and a quick thinker, capable of coming up with solutions to problems on the fly. But if she has too much on her mind, she could be oblivious to things like, initially, Amity's crush on her. At times, Luce has also been shown to utter small phases in Spanish when experiencing certain bounds of emotion. She also possesses fondness for certain animals that most would find creepy and disgusting, such as snakes, spiders, and possums. Luce is determined to be who she wants to be regardless of the opposition she receives. However, her remarkably headstrong personality has also landed her in trouble on several occasions. As noted by Hunter in Hunting Palisman, Luce tends to rush into dangerous situations without always thinking things through. This is translated in the Boiling Isles by way of occasionally disobeying Ida and getting into trouble. Despite this, Luce is intelligent and surprisingly introspective when she allows herself the room to breathe. Multiple times, Luce has shown herself to be exceptionally brave and heroic, risking her life on several occasions to protect others especially those she loves. She does not tolerate when others take advantage of their positions in life, regularly standing up for herself, and those who cannot do so themselves or inspiring them to, as seen against the likes of Fosha at school and Bellows' oppressive rule on the Isles. In addition, when provoked enough, Luce is capable of great rage and is quite formidable as an opponent. This was seen during Ida's attempted execution at the Confirmatorium, where Luce entered a state of despair-induced aggression capable of not only appearing to empower her magic, but even striking fear into veteran members of the Emperor's Coven, such as Warden Wrath and Ida's sister Lilith, and earning the praise of Emperor Bellows himself. However, behind much of her optimism and creativity, Luce possesses deep insecurities due to the years of ostracism she endured in the human realm before arriving in the Boiling Isles. Because of her eccentric interests and new divergence behavior, she is seen as an outcast on Earth and difficult to engage with by her peers, school staff, and initially her mother, leading to her not only suffering an utterly friendless childhood in Gravesfield, but also frequent resistance and often ridicule from other children and their parents. This constant rejection from her peers, along with her inability to make friends, has resulted in Luz developing underlying self-esteem issues, which will occasionally manifest. This has also left Luz afraid of basic interactions with most other humans, especially those her age, 
as was demonstrated when she initially assumed V's companions from camp to be bullies who would pick on her before being left dumbfounded when it was revealed that they were her friends. In addition, another factor that weighs heavily on Lucy's mind is the loss of her father, whom she still grieves for, even years after his passing. It's also been implied on occasion that much of Lucy's creativity, eccentricity, optimism, and love for fantasy, especially her fondness for the Azora franchise, which was the final gift her father gave her, is a means of coping with his loss. Following her Palisford's birth, Luce managed to regain some of her previous spirit, being noticeably more happy, playful, and confident in herself once again, which continued to grow following her heartfelt reunion with King and Ida after enduring months of separation from them. In addition, Luce also retained her sense of compassion and empathetic nature, as shown when, despite all the harm the Collector had caused to both the Isles and her loved ones, she sympathized with his yearning for companionship, offering him with a chance at redemption and teaching him how to establish genuine friendships with others. After meeting and receiving wisdom from the Titan in the in-between realm, Luz would finally make peace with her previous mistakes was finally able to let go of her guilt over accidentally helping Bellows in the past. Finally freed from these emotions, her previously eccentric and optimistic personality showed through once again, which proved essential in allowing her to master the Titan's powers and defeat Bellows for good. Amity is described as a bright and competitive individual with a passionate drive to succeed and rise to the best both in school and in society. This could be seen in her dream to one day join the Empress Coven, which only accepted the most skilled of witches into its ranks. When she and Luz first met, however, Amity was shown to be very proud and arrogant, to the point of being boastful, haughty, and confrontational. As the top student at Hexide, Amity took pride in her status, as the best students in the entire school and went as far as to use it as a bragging right often to get what she wanted. This caused her to look down on other students who weren't as successful, as she was and often teased them for it, in which she would brag about her superiority while offering them half-hearted encouragement. Additionally, Amity didn't take kindly to those who she felt were stealing her spotlight and would spitefully attempt to get back at them in order to prove her superiority as she twice attempted to do so with Luce. In line with her vindictiveness, Amity also showed a lack of responsibility and was unwilling to admit when she was at fault instead of directly blaming onto others for her own mistakes. Like many witches on the Boiling Isles, Amity also initially held humans in low regard due to their inability to wield magic on their own. Eventually, however, Amity was shown to possess a much more sensitive side to her personality, which she kept hidden beneath her sense of superiority. This sensitivity was shown when her reputation was compromised becoming extremely frustrated and deeply depressed whenever she failed to meet her own standards for success. Along with her hidden vulnerable side, Amity was also much kinder than she initially let on. This was first shown in convention, when she was genuinely impressed by Luce's commitment in becoming a witch, to the point of honorably unbinding the everlasting oath that would have prevented her from doing this, showing that she genuinely respects those who demonstrate hard work and determination. Another prominent trait of Amity's kindness is her fondness of children. Though initially stern and cynical towards those her own age, Amity was extremely sweet and patient towards smaller children, with her enjoying reading to them as part of her job at the Bonesboro Library. Additionally, it was revealed in Lost in Language that, like Luce, Amity is a fan of the Good Witch's Zora book series, 
which served as an important factor in their eventual friendship. In Understanding Willow, it was revealed that Amity's negative traits were the result of the controlling influence of her parents, namely her emotionally abusive mother, Odalia. This included her seeming desire of joining the Emperor's Coven, which was, in truth, forced upon her by Odalia. This suggests that much of Amity's haughty demeanor was, in truth, a facade to hide her emotional insecurities. In truth, after her parents forced her to cut ties with Willow, Amity was an extremely miserable and lonely individual who took no pleasure in the company of the friends she usually hung out with, having only done so at her parents' command. As was revealed in her diary entries, this caused her to secretly yearn for true companionship, while also deeply regretting the meaningness she showed towards others at school, both of which she attempted to hide in order to maintain the standards of strength demanded of her by her parents. Ultimately, a leading factor in Amity's emotional development and maturity would be her friendship and eventual romance with Luce. Initially, Amity was very hostile and resentful of Luce, but as time passed, she became increasingly touched by the constant kindness that Luce showed her. In Lost in Language, after being saved by Luce from a corrupted Otterbin, Amity came to realize that her initial misgivings about Luce were wrong, and slowly began opening up to her, with the two forming a connection due to their mutual fondness of the Azura series. As her friendship with Luce grew, Amity gradually began to be kinder to others, while also slowly beginning to make amends with Willow, reconnecting with her older siblings, and distancing herself from Bosch's group to the point of standing against them in defense of her newfound friends. Eventually, as their friendship grew, Amity would develop a strong crush on Luce, being enamored by the human's unwavering kindness and empathetic nature. However, due to her lack of experience with romantic attractions, this crush would often manifest in the form of extreme nervousness, clumsiness, and spontaneousness blushing when she found herself in Luce's presence. By the time of Enchanting Gromfright, her attraction for Luce had reached such a point that her deepest fear became rejected by Luce. In Escaping Expulsion, it was through her love for Luce that Amity would eventually find the courage to stand up to her parents. When Odalia attempted to have Luce killed by the Abomination 2.0 at the Blight Industries Expo, Amity furiously came to her crush's defense to defy her mother's orders for the first time, showing impressive bravery and determination to not only protect Luce, but also to exert her freedom from the controlling influence that she had long been subjected to. This courage was exemplified once again in Through the Looking Glass Ruins. Get it? It's a play out of the Alice in Wonderland film of the same title. What a clever name by Disney. Where Amity began dyeing her hair purple instead of green, despite knowing her mother would be angered by this further symbolizing her growing sense of independence. Since standing up to her parents and becoming Luce's girlfriend, Amity's personality has significantly improved and matured. In contrast to her initial proud, irritable, and cynical demeanor, Amity has since become much happier, friendly, patient, and humble regularly smiling and no longer suppressing the better qualities that she previously kept hidden. That was a lot, but it was fucking worth it. In terms of VAs, like some of the previous characters, both characters have one VA. For Luce, it's Sarah Nicole Robles. I hope I pronounced that surname right. Known for her roles before and during her Owl House role in stuff like Star Darlings, Billy Dilly's Super Duper Subditarian Summer, I'm pretty sure I just butchered that, and, get this, Encanto, but not as a main role though, sorry to say. Sarah provides a really wonderful performance as Luce, 
She makes her all those things I mentioned in the character description. And for Avani, we have Mae Whitman voicing her. And she's also been in a few things before her Owl House role. Such as April in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series from 2012 to 2017, Katara in Avatar The Last Airbender, Batgirl in Batman The Brave and the Bold, and... Get this... Tinkerbell! I'm serious, the same Tinkerbell we all know and love! Anyway, May absolutely nails her voice role as Amity in this show. You can clearly tell that whenever there's a scene when Amity's angry, May was just having a blast behind the mic. Like, if you take this scene out of context, it's pretty damn insane. And now we're on to the moment all you Luby fans have been waiting for me to cover. The episodes. I can safely say that there isn't a single Lumity episode I dislike. Even with their rivalry stories, or when the two have separate leading roles. Like a Lion Witch the Warden, or Labyrinth Brothers as examples. But let's get into their standout moments in the series. My favorite Lumity episode should come as no surprise to anyone who's watched my channel for a while now. It's Enchanting Grom Fright. I adore this one. As said in the character description, this episode shows that Amity has a bit of a crush on Luce, even if she doesn't say it out loud or anything. And I absolutely adore the final dance battle. It reminds me of the dance battle in Puss in Boots. At least to me it does. I even love this little line from the two as well. <laughs> yeah, right. You going soft on me, Blight? <laughs> In your dreams. That line is basically the Dirty Percy line of Enchanting Grom Fright. You know what I mean by that. He won't choose Dirty Percy. Don't call me Dirty Percy. I also want to give two other episodes a particular shout out as well. First is Eddie Sport in a Storm. This episode is heavily Willow focused. But the moments with Lumity are also really great. Them trying to find out if the author of the Azura books is from Luce's world, or from Amity's world. It's a very interesting one. And I also want to give a shout out to the episode that I'm sure many Lumity fans have been wanting me to talk about. Because of one specific scene. It's none other than Clouds on the Horizon. In this episode, after being grounded by this bitch... Amity is distraught over her not being able to contact Luce over her mom breaking her communication thingy. Which all leads to Luce and King being separated in King's Tide. But it's not the build up that sells it for me. It's not even the scene where Amity has had enough of all of the shit her mother has been putting her through. It's the bedroom scene that sells it for me. In that moment... Emera asks Amity what Luce would say to her, in which she claims that she would say something rather dorky but sweet at the same time. She says this, And everything's been so crazy, we've barely been able to spend time together, and I am not letting the world end before we go on a real date. Luce arrives, and then, we are presented with this. It's going to be the most mundane slice of life date ever, and it'll be awesome. I know. And at that moment, the entire Owl House community went nuts over it. You guys think I'm joking? Check out these reactions if you don't believe me. They're gonna, they're just gonna. Oh, crikey. 
No! No! Oh my gosh, I just quit! That's not where the cranky came from! <laughs> Fuck off! Literally, at that moment, everyone, including myself, freaked out over this scene. It was so unexpected. It's even capped off with this funny line from the two. I can't believe I just did that. I can't believe I just said that. Who wrote this episode? Eric Kierka and Miki Christos Tomo. Kudos to you both for putting in a scene we did not expect. Luce and Arany are objectively the most well-developed and amazing characters they've become over the course of the four years the Owl House has been airing. Start out as bitter enemies, to slowly befriending each other, to suddenly having a crush on one another, to then start dating and falling in love with each other and becoming girlfriends? You couldn't have asked for a better character arc than this. And the fact that this was done by Disney of all companies, who is currently making some crappy live action remakes to classic films no one really cares about, is just so mind boggling to believe. The fact that the team at Disney sat down for once and put some thought and mind into these characters is amazing. Lucy and Amity aren't just the best Disney duo, but the best Disney characters of all time, at least in my opinion. I cannot wait to see the day when we see another duo just as amazing and on the same level as Lucy and Amity. These two girls deserve to be in the Hall of Fame as some of my favorite characters in all of Disney's history. Simply perfect. And thus concludes the character highlight reels. We've had some gems, but we've also had quite a few stinkers. This has been an incredibly fun series to work on and make. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this incredible ride. Because I've certainly enjoyed making these. 
and let me know what your favourite character or characters are that I've covered in this marathon. I know there's going to be some obvious answers, but I'd like to know your guys' personal preferences. For me, I've enjoyed covering Thomas, Maggie, and Lumini the most. There's some others I've enjoyed covering, like Pingu, Lightning McQueen, Mario Brothers, and even Tari. But I feel like all these characters deserve some limelight. That's all from me, folks. Leave a like and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on all the newest content. And I'll see you all in the next video.